Hey guys, welcome to Future Riffs. I'm Ryan, and today we're gonna check out some chord tapping. So chord tapping is exactly what it sounds like. I'm going to be holding different chords and showing you guys uh, some options for tapping lines that work with your chord. Uh, a lot of people really think tapping is just a shred technique, you know, doing your triads, your that stuff, uh, which it's awesome for that, of course. Uh, but uh, some of our like chill hop guys or uh, more indie players would really like uh, to be able to utilize these techniques in a different way. Uh, and I've been hearing a lot of guys do tapping while they're playing chords. So for this video today, uh, I have my pick on my knee. Uh, I'm gonna be doing this open-handed uh, because I wanna show you guys how to do it with uh, like your peace sign fingers. We're gonna do pointer finger and middle finger. So the first one that we're gonna look at is going to be a minor. So we're going to grab an A minor bar chord. So we'll go all the way up to fifth fret on our E string, which is an A note, and then we'll set up our A minor bar or our minor bar in general. Okay. The next step is we have to find a space, a fret of choice uh, to tap a pattern. For this video, I'm going to show you guys completely flat patterns. So I'm going to go straight down a single fret. So for A minor, my perfect parallel is at 12. And there's also another one that's a little bit uh, more lush sounding. There's some different colorizations in it at 10. So we have both of these. So now I'm doing harmony parts and I'm using that peace sign kind of configuration, but let's go ahead and let's start with one finger, okay? So uh, a lot of people tap with their pointer finger. Now, if you're a pick player, you should tap with your middle finger. That way you can continue to hold on to your pick. So whatever finger you want to start with on this exercise uh, isn't going to make a difference. I'm going to have you use both by the end anyway. So let's go ahead and let's start with our middle finger. Uh, I am going to practice tapping and getting a real nice legato sound, real smooth and connected, uh, starting on my high E string, working my way down to my low E string, just straight across 12th fret. So we will have this with just my middle finger. One more time. Once you feel comfortable just going uh, up and down in like a linear pattern, try string skipping with just that one finger. So you can make up any pattern you want. They're all going to sound pretty cool, actually. So I'm going to go two strings back, one string forward. So I'm going to go E string, G, B, D. G, A, D, and finish it with E. Oop, I repeated that one twice. There we go, we'll make up for it. Okay, so now, once I really feel comfortable using one finger, we need to incorporate the other do the same exercises. So I was doing that with my middle finger, so now trying it with my pointer finger, I am running linear. And you guys will notice that I pull, when I pull off of the string, I'm pulling towards uh, myself, I'm pulling up. Um, some people go down. Uh, there really isn't much, uh, there, there really isn't uh, a good or bad there your call, <laughs> okay? Uh, I'm really comfortable up, so uh, I do most of my techniques uh, in any form of tapping where I'm releasing 
up towards myself, okay? So, once we feel comfortable with both fingers just doing that, or your skipping patterns, now we should try two. To get a really pretty harmony, I like to do every other string. So I'm doing E string and G at the same time. Now, one of the harder things to achieve here is to get a really strong tap with both and a really clean pull off where you're only hearing the E and the G together and not the B and not the D or one of them getting cut off. So really just go to town and practice it. Don't be discouraged. Aim at the very bottom portion of your fret space like you're almost gonna go into the next fret because you'll get the strongest hammer on and the strongest pull off in that position. Then you can start working your way through your strings. And my goal the entire time is to remain really legato. And that just means connected, that's all. I don't want um, a staccato sound in this exercise. I want it to be really lush. I really like that idea of getting kind of like a groovy thing going on where you're filling out a lot of uh, space. I really like that. I think it's kind of cool. So now, once you really feel comfortable there, you've got your intervals kind of taken care of, you're doing two strings apart. And now you can do, uh, be creative with it, make it your own. You can try further strings apart, closer together. Get a little kind of fifth sounds, kind of cool. Kind of like that, that's fun. Uh, or further apart. You get a lot more uh, octaves that way because of your chord of choice, uh, which is kind of cool as well. Uh, after that, you can start finding other places that you can tap. Okay, so I'm still holding my A minor chord, uh, A minor bar chord. Uh, I can now use 10 if I want. both work because I'm using an A minor chord. If I shift and use like a G minor, these have to follow. So I'll now be at 10 and 8 instead of 12 and 10. So now G minor. Everything's relative based off of what your left hand is doing. And that's going to be a rule in a lot of things. If you're doing something particular here, of course, it's going to affect your string scale for the rest of it. Okay, so now there's going to be uh, some advanced techniques that we can kind of start working our way into here. You have these two fingers available still. So now what if we do a pattern where we go back and forth? This is going to uh, give us that iconic speed that tapping typically has tied to it. Typically when you hear people tap, they're going like a million miles an hour. They're doing a really cool Van Halen riff or something, you know, edgy. Uh, this is going to give you some of that back, but it's still going to be in a chord format. I'm going to go back to doing that every other string thing. I'm going to do that again. Now, you can work this pattern up. And you really start getting some speed, okay? Some really cool stuff will start happening there, okay? Uh, now, the next step after all of that, you've now practiced with both fingers individually, you've practiced some string skipping, you're putting them together, and you're now starting to get chords. Uh, now, you can make your left hand more complicated, whether it's staying on the same position and changing what type of minor chord or major chord you have. Uh, like if I wanted to use an A minor nine instead of an, just an A minor, I'll get a different colorization. So an A minor, uh, A minor nine. I really love nine chords, whether they're major or minor, they always have that. A really cool interval is just so cool sounding. So now I have this wild thing, okay? So, so now when I tap, we're gonna have a one note difference. Let's see if we can find it. There it 
playlist. Oh, I like that. That's cool. Or, so now I made my, my one chord more complicated. Now I could add more chords. So I could come up with a left hand groove, uh, like a... Just back and forth from A minor to G major. kind of like hitting it right at the head instead of waiting so we can go see and you can just keep discovering and discovering moving around uh, and now of course I, I said at the beginning of the video that I was just showing you guys linear patterns so that you could really focus on where to tap of course you have way more options if you're willing to get riskier with your tap uh, we'll cover that in a more, uh, in a later video. How about that? Uh, that way we can really come up with some really ridiculous patterns. I, I would love to show you guys some modal tapping, like some Dorian tapping, uh, and Phrygian tapping where you have a part of a scale, uh, and then you tap across patterns as well, uh, doing this type of stuff. Uh, You really get some really wild stuff depending on your knowledge of where your key signature sits. And we'll cover that too at some point, okay? All right, so let's recap a little bit, okay? Uh, we have A minor. We go up to 12th fret or 10, and we have those complete straight lines because of our key signature. All of those notes are in game. They're all inbound. Uh, and we can tap across them with two fingers or one. When you start feeling really comfortable with it, start turning it into a ridiculous groove with your left hand and adding those taps in. Uh, there are so many super duper cool bands out there doing way more advanced than this, but you have to start somewhere. Getting that right hand incorporated allows you to play in a big extended range where uh, now you're not limited to chords that you can reach with just one hand. You can now have chords that extend across the entire scale of your instrument, uh, which I think is super duper cool, but call me a nerd, whatever. It's totally cool. Learn it, love it, use it, make it sound melodic, make it sound beautiful, make it sound ugly if that's your real goal. Uh, for some people it is. Make it sound noise rocky. I have a huge pedal board over here on the ground next to me that I cannot wait to do a video on and show you guys. Uh, my buddy Casey is just such a monster with putting these things together. He always helps me. Helps me is not even the right word. He pretty much does the whole thing for me and then teaches me how to use it. And they are always the coolest, most intuitive thing with tons of cool stuff. Today, all you're hearing is just a, the new Line 6 HX Stomp with the most recent update to whatever date this video posts. Uh, but thank you guys. Uh, practice your chord tapping. Practice a lot of anything. Practice growing your hair. I'm leaving. I want airheads. I bet you Steven. Oh yeah, Steven's the other dude. Uh, probably ate all my airheads, but uh, we'll find out in a second. But right now I'm attached to this cable. There we go, ha ha. Psych, there's still some.